Okay, now we have our Y accent cut out. And you can see over here we've got a tool set up. Now this will be its own independent tool path as you see here now. So what I'm going to do now is go back to the main screen. I'm going to go back over here to my layers. I'm going to turn off the Y accents and turn on the Y outline. So we can cut this out. That will be a separate tool path. Again, we go back to create a profile. We'll select on this. Profile here. And we're going to change the actual cut depth. And in this cut depth, I'm going to go... 0.625, which is 5 eighths of an inch. That will allow the tool to actually go through the MDF that I'm cutting and cut into the uh, spoil board. We'll have tabs on it so the part won't fall out. So with that done, I'll go ahead and select the actual tool path I want to cut out, this outline. I'll come down and now say outside the tool path. So I've got my depth set to 5 eighths of an inch, and now it's saying 20 passes. Well, that's a whole lot of passes, so we're going to edit that. We'll bring up this edit path. And what I'll do is set my cut depth to 0.09, and I'll hit apply, and that should reduce the number of cuts. Actually, I need to do it down here. So we'll step down to that, and we'll come down to about oh, that many passes. I'll do one more, add one more to that, so that's about 0.089. So that looks pretty good. So we'll set those passes. And what that means is it's going to set each pass. I go around and cut this out. If we're too aggressive and set a, say, a cut depth of a quarter of an inch, it could snap the tool or the cutter that I'm using to cut out this part. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And it's telling me that I'm going to get seven passes, as you see here. Hit OK. Now, what's critical at this point is we've got to add hold downs to the piece. So once it's cut all the way through, the part could come off, crash into the cutter on the actual CNC router. So tabs are critical. Now, knowing that I'm using half-inch material, I'll go ahead and hit Add Tabs. Now, I've set my tab width or length to a quarter of an inch, and I've set the actual tab thickness, as you see here, to a 3 16ths of an inch. But I need to add the tabs to the part, so I'll go ahead and hit OK, and I'll hit Add Tabs. Now, it, by default, we'll add a tab up here. To get rid of that tab, I'll go ahead and get rid of that by hitting my tab uh, cursor over the top of that. What's important is to put a tab where I can later get back to and cut it off and sand it. So I'll put one here on this edge and one over here on that edge, and then I'll come up here to the top, put one here, one here. Now, sometimes when the tool is cutting out your part, this flap right here will start flapping up. So I'll go ahead and put one on the smooth edge because that's easier to cut and sand. So I'll come back here to this, and I'll put one down. I'll just put it here in the middle. So that looks pretty good. So that's got all my tabs and hold down and I'll hit close on that. Now, again, I'll have to name this, and I'm gonna say Y underscore profile cutout. i do an underscore as well. You don't have to do that, but I'll just put it in there. Okay, and so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna calculate that tool path. Now it's gonna come up and give me a warning that I'm cutting down through that very deep. Well, I'm doing that on purpose because I want good straight edges I want to make sure I get into the spoil board so my part looks really, really nice when I cut it out. So I'll hit OK. It's going to open up our 3D window, and let's zoom up on this and take a look. You can see a couple of things. Let me just pan over here to that. You see the 3 16 inch tab that's left here on this, on this corner right here. The blue signifies the actual uh, cutout of the tool path that it's going to take. So I'll go ahead and fit that on the screen. I'll say Reset Preview, and I just want to look at the Y cutout itself not the accents. And so there the tool goes and cuts it out. It simulates what it's going to look at. I can use my left mouse button to rotate it and come up here and then I'll use my middle uh, uh, thumb wheel on my mouse so I can just hold it down and drag. And as you can see there's the tab that it simulates on the cutting out. Well that looks pretty good. But let's look at the overall part and how it's going to finish up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say Reset Preview, and I'm going to view all of my tool paths. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Only one problem. If you notice down here in the profile cutout, this is a problem. It's using a V-group. We can't do that. We're going to use an end mill to cut that out. So I'm going to close this. I'm going to double click on that profile and change the tool. So I'll go back up to my selector. I'm going to come over here and select an eighth inch end mill single flute that I added to my tool library that I've created. I'll apply that. As you can see, these are like three or four flutes on this one. The one we'll cut out with only has one flute or blade on the cutter. But that's okay. That's just a visual. So I'll apply that. Hit OK. Now I'll come back here 
and I'll recalculate the tool path. Okay, so I've recalculated it, and now you notice over here on this cutout, it shows a straight end mill tool, and that's good. So we'll go ahead and reset our preview and preview all tool paths again. That's what we want to achieve. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save for right now, and we'll come back to this in a moment. 